Where on earth did you get these? Sometimes you need a whole room full. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weapon rooms in movies. For this list, we're taking a look at those spaces that movie characters use to store their caches of weapons. That is sick. The more firepower, the better. Not that we condone that sort of thing. Stay shit. This is a movie. Number 10, the surplus store, Commando. Where are we going? Shopping. There's one thing you never do, and that's kidnap the daughter of an Arnold Schwarzenegger character. <laughs> oh, you bastards. Forced to help a former South American dictator if he wants his daughter back, retired Special Forces soldier John Matrix instead decides to settle this personal matter with his own two hands. You're a funny guy, Sally. I like you. That's why I'm going to kill you last. Before launching an attack, he breaks into a surplus store stacked with weapons ranging from detonators to rocket launchers. Come on, come on. Ah. Dimly lit with tight frames of John grabbing everything he can, every cut of this scene is gritty and jam-packed with guns that take up every space of the frame, the way every good weapon room should be. What's that? Rocket launcher. Number 9. The Classy Weapons Cache. Kingsman, the Secret Service. Manners maketh man. Veteran secret agent Harry Hart has recruited Eggsy, the son of his fallen colleague, to join the ranks of the secret intelligence agency, the Kingsman. The day your father died, I missed something. And if it went for his courage, my mistake would have cost the lives of every man present. So I owe him. No recruitment would be complete without the obligatory introduction to the weapons cache. Pull the hook on your left. And this unstoppable action-packed spy film adds a new level of gloss to the armory. Very, very nice. The space appears to be non-threatening enough, filled with dress shoes, umbrellas, and the like. But these are just weapons in disguise, which help the agents live up to the principle of secrecy necessary to be part of the Kingsman organization. What do these do? Electrocute you. Don't be ridiculous. It's a hand grenade. Shut up. Number eight, Wei Lin's hidden armory. Tomorrow never dies. Stand up. With his license to kill, British Secret Service agent James Bond doesn't usually have to worry about his supply of weapons. Ah, my new author. Ask Q to get me one of these. Since Q's got a lab full of gadgets waiting for him back at MI6 headquarters. A pen. This is a class four grenade. Three clicks, arms the four second fuse, another three disarms it. But what happens when 007 runs into difficulty overseas when trying to prevent a war? Fortunately, Chinese spy and ally Wei Lin makes him feel like he's back at home. Hmm, it's just like home. Her secret armory bears a striking resemblance to the MI6 lab, and after a few jokes about Chinese replicas of British weapons are exchanged... This looks familiar. We've made some improvements. Have you indeed? It becomes clear that the Chinese agents have enough gadgets of their own that make this room truly one of a kind. I've always been a fan of Chinese technology. Number seven, Jack Jeeves' pawn shop. Men in black. Now just hold on a second. I'm gonna count to three. He'll do it, Jeeves. One. I'm telling you, that man does not look stable. The weapon storage space at MIB headquarters, where K gives the noisy cricket to J, is quite impressive in and of itself. Series four, de atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. However, this scene in Jack Jeeves's pawn shop is the very first moment that introduces J to a world he's never seen before. Why don't you get a massage? Take a cruise. Great. Drop the weapon and put your hands on your head. I warned it. Drop the weapon! You warned it. Don't make me kill you. You insensitive prick. When the veteran K brings newbie J along to help identify a weapon... Mr. Edwards. Right there. The one in the middle. Not only does the pawn shop change into a space that harbors a massive collection of high-tech illegal alien weaponry in secret compartments, but it also changes Jay's life, and the story unravels from there. Searching for a handle on the moment. I can't help you. Number six, shed of unlicensed firearms, Hot Fuzz. When the ambitious London constable Nicholas Angel is transferred to an ordinary and quaint English village. That's in the country. He finds himself constantly running into bizarre situations. Mr. Webley, I trust you have a license for that firearm. I don't for this one. He does for this one. He does for this one. 
What do you mean by this one? One of them happens to be when he discovers a barn full of illegal firearms, including a naval mine, which is as scary as it looks. Nah, use a lot of junk. With fast-paced editing and close-ups of guns and ammunition, the seemingly endless stash of weapons were shown in the shed is just one more oddity in the unusual town of Sanford, Gloucestershire. Oh, come on, Dr. Sherlock. They were accidents. People have accidents every day. Needless to say, the guns are confiscated. But don't worry, they're eventually put to use later on. Still feel like you're missing out? <laughs> Number 5. General Joseph Colton's House. G.I. Joe Retaliation. Take two cases of Thin Mints and a box of Chuckalucks. It seems like when you're a general, you're always prepared to go to war. When the crew is invited to General Colton's house to be equipped with armaments, they instead get an unexpected tour of the house. You never met a man like me. You wouldn't understand. Within a matter of minutes, the place turns from a normal residence into a military base as weapons are revealed from their skillfully hidden spots throughout the building. Merry Christmas. For a moment, this weapon room, or weapons house rather, gets everyone's attention, even Storm Shadow, who rarely shows any interest in modern firearms. Anything? I brought my own. Number four, the Saints go marching in with weapons. The Boondog Saints. Nobody wanted to get involved. Nobody, 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 nobody. Whosoever shed man's blood. Irish Catholic brothers Connor and Murphy McManus have their prayers answered when they get their hands on the weapons they need to begin doling out their special brand of justice. Knock yourselves out. In exchange for whatever they can offer an underground gun dealer, they're given access to a room most vigilantes only dream of. Like kids in a candy store, the two brothers just can't get enough as they try to stuff whatever weaponry they can into their goodie bag. Do you know what we need, man? It's raw. Absolutely. What are you, insane? Unfortunately, the heavy machine gun has to stay, but we can't deny that it certainly was some eye candy. Is that right, Rambo? Number three, Mr. and Mrs. Smith's house. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Latino Caribo. There's nothing more attractive than seeing two charming Hollywood stars playing a normal couple while each secretly works as an undercover assassin for a different agency. Have you been selling big guns to bad people? Huh? What's Before they aim their guns at each other, our attraction shifts to their hidden armories where we learn a lot about their characteristics. John Smith's basement, lit with fluorescent lights and with walls of tactically stainless steel shelves stacked with guns, shows how power hungry he is when it comes to eliminating foes. On the flip side, his elegant wife Jane Smith prefers her weapons compartment in a fancier and more neatly arranged way, with just the right amount of munitions for her specific style of assassination. Number two, underground weapons bunker. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. You two, you're on weapons detail. When the T-1000 is sent to kill John Connor, our heroes are at their wit's end. As it's physically impossible to stop the highly advanced killing machine with any form of firepower, the trio heads to the desert as their last option, where they're in for a surprise. One thing about my mom, she always plans ahead. Ingeniously, this scene is perfectly structured to give our heroes hope for their mission to prevent the titular Judgment Day. Excellent. On top of that, the bunker contains the biggest and baddest guns, even showcasing the iconic minigun to add some extra oomph. That's definitely you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, early birdie. Aw, you beat me to it. I wanted to get you breakfast this morning. <laughs> This gate keeps me close to the border, and the designer duds ain't bad either. Voila! Jesus Christ, Lewis! Shit. What a beauty. First thing they'll do in engineering is establish a collective. Number one, virtual stock room. The Matrix. Okay, so what do you need? Besides a miracle. Guns. Lots of guns. Not only did this film popularize bullet time, it also earned its spot as the movie with the best weapon room thanks to this gun-filled scene. 
Although the weapons we're shown here only exist in the virtual world, the fact that there are so many just amplifies the gravity of the dire situation in which our heroes find themselves. Neo, no one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. As we see how determined Neo and Trinity are to enter the Matrix one last time, we can't help but think that the relentless agents would have probably prepared themselves more appropriately if they'd known about this stockroom beforehand. No. Do you agree with our list? Thanks to me, they were right. What's your favorite weapon room from a movie? What happened to World Peace? F World Peace. For more fully stocked top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Words to live by, Exeo. Words to live by.